our next guest found out she had the BRCA2 gene mutation, which had been linked to hereditary breast and ovarian cancer. She was not about to wait around for symptoms to develop. Here's Lisa's story. My name is Lisa, I'm 46. I was raised in a family of 10 siblings and one of my four sisters, Mimi, last year passed away from a seven year battle with ovarian cancer. My gynecologist just said, you know, with your sister's passing and your family history, I would strongly recommend and really like for you to go get this genetic screening. I went and got tested and it turned out that I had the mutated gene, the BRCA2 mutation. I was shocked. Once I was diagnosed, I really felt like I was a ticking time bomb. So I made the choice right then and there to be proactive. I was going to take the more aggressive approach. Lisa J, who's here with us, that aggressive approach was preventative surgery. She's joined here by reconstructive and plastic surgeon, Dr. Lisa Kasselik. <laughs> Lisa J, tell me how you're doing. I'm doing great. Yeah? On the road to recovery. And how did you make that decision? Once I found out that I could alleviate all or almost all of the risk by getting rid of the breast tissue, I said, let's go in. So everyone should know you have a 90% lower chance of developing breast cancer if you have the preventative surgery. And so, that's where Dr. Castle yes. comes in. And, you know, this is a different type of surgery. I've been doing uh, breast reconstruction for 30 years now, but in one stage, you are removing that potentially precancerous tissue and reconstructing the breast at the same time. So this is a big innovation. Tell us more about oh, thank that. Thank you. So what we're doing is a more of a breast augmentation scar. Of course, the nipple cannot be involved with tumor of any kind. All the tissue needs to be cancer-free. We're talking about a scar under the breast or right at the edge of the nipple areola. And you know, through that entire surgery, the whole breast is taken out and the implants placed in one stage. So this and is something women really need to know because it makes them want to consider preventive me measures more than they did before. Because before it was such a traumatic right. thing, you're left without breast for such a long time. I think that's and such a big issue. And you have to go issue. through all that trauma. And I think a yeah. lot of women may now be scared do and, and don't want to go get things checked. They're afraid of losing their, their breast. They need to know the great options that are out there. Not and Dr. Kasselith, part of your reconstruction, you're doing something in addition called your internal brassiere right. to, to deal with probably the, the two biggest problems that we face in reconstruction. Right. The two biggest problems are really capsular contraction, rippling. You can see implants through the skin or you have a very tight looking reconstruction. What we want is natural and we want it to look like a pretty good looking breast. Mm -hmm. So yeah. at the time of the reconstruction, I designed an internal bra and it actually allows me to put the breast in the right place on the chest wall and have it look like the breast that we want. I think you wanted. have a piece of that tissue I do. to show us how that works. I do. This is basically a mock-up of what the stuff looks okay. like. And it comes in a sheet. Then I cut the sheet. Now this is something I cut more to fit your model. It goes at the bottom of the breast, and it actually becomes a three-dimensional object. It holds it onto the chest wall. Up here, the pectoralis muscle is present, and so we have a full internal closed space where this implant sits, and the matrix keeps it soft and becomes part of the body. And I think this is going to be huge for women trying to, you know, prevent breast cancer, to know this. And thank you so much for coming and sharing your story. We're glad you're doing so well. And thank you, Dr. Kasselis, for joining us and, and showing us your new innovative things.